Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Since the early days of warfare, bridges have been among the most critical strategic landmarks. Without a bridge, even a small river or stream is enough to stop a powerful army right in its tracks. As time went on and technology improved, military tacticians decided to focus less on capturing and holding bridges and more on finding ways to bring bridges with them while they move from place to place. Nowadays, armies worldwide can cross rivers, streams, and other significant barriers in minutes thanks to these innovations. Over the years, there have been dozens of approaches to so-called portable bridges. One particularly successful example is the M3 amphibious rig. Designed by German firm Eisenwerker Kaiserslautern, the M3 is a 4x4 wheeled vehicle capable of accompanying troops as they move across land. However, upon reaching a river or stream, the M3 can unfold itself, revealing a set of pontoons to either side. After driving into the water, the vehicle can enable crossings in several different ways. It can ferry troops and vehicles from one side of the lake to another or attach itself to several other M3s, deploying a series of aluminum ramps to create a fully operational bridge. Because the M3 is built to be both durable and buoyant, entire divisions can cross over these temporary bridges in minutes. Another approach to bridging that has been in use for decades is to use deployable floating pontoons. Such work is the domain of special engineering divisions, like the 74th Multi-Role Bridging Company of the United States. The pontoons are carried by trucks, helicopters, and other means then dropped into the water where they can be retrieved by waiting fast boats. The team of engineers will then immediately get to work hooking all of the bridge sections together using a series of built-in clamps. Once complete, these bridge sections are essentially fully operational roads. The unit has capabilities uh, to use several different types of bridges to move across uh, several obstacles. The bridge that we're constructing today is a floating bridge that can move across large bodies of water, whether they be uh, lake waters or if they be waters with current, be it a river um, or a canal. When figuring out engineering challenges like these, versatility is key. They not only have safety paint and lane markings, but they are buoyant enough to carry multiple heavy tanks at one time. In the event that the number of pontoons does not allow the company to traverse the river completely, the entire bridge can function as a ferry. with boats to either side providing propulsion as the army crosses the river. That way, troops have options to solve all of the unique problems that they might encounter in the field. Despite the success of existing methods, 
the United States military and other organizations worldwide continue to search for newer, more advanced ways of accomplishing the same job. The M30 bridge erection boat is one such example. The M30 is an aluminum hulled boat, approximately 36 feet long and 10 feet wide. It's powered by two diesel engines, giving it a top speed of around 20 knots. It's equipped with a bridge launching mechanism that allows it to assemble, launch and drive a floating bridge rapidly. Like the bridge sections themselves, the M30 can be carried on the back of a truck for quick deployment whenever troops encounter a river. There have also been numerous improvements to the floating pontoon bridge sections, often referred to as ribbon bridges. Modern models are not only much lighter, but boast increased buoyancy so that they can hold more weight. This also helps keep each bridge section from sinking too deep into the water, so the attached boats can move them much faster. The primary goal of any ribbon bridge deployment is speed and efficiency. Every minute a convoy spends on the side of a river waiting to cross is a potential opportunity that an enemy might try to take advantage of. By far, the most essential capability of ribbon bridges is their ability to transport tanks. This is accomplished due to the buoyancy, as mentioned earlier and a unique locking mechanism that ensures each section of the bridge is solidly affixed to the next. Even the mighty M1 Abrams tank, weighing up to 73 tons, can confidently drive onto the ribbon bridge for transport across the water. In the past, tanks and armored personnel carriers would have to find a shallow area to ford the river or travel dozens of miles to a traditional bridge. With this new technology, they can cross wherever makes the most strategic sense. Tanks are the heavy hitters of the armored vehicle world but they are far from the only options for safely moving troops from one place to another. Since World War II, militaries around the world have embraced light armored vehicles, or LAVs. These are small wheeled or tracked vehicles capable of accomplishing a wide range of jobs. They can patrol city streets, forests, and rural areas while traversing almost any type of terrain. Many LAVs are also designed to operate amphibiously, which means they can function on land and in water. Amphibious LAVs are equipped with features such as watertight seals, propellers, and buoyancy chambers that allow them to move quickly through the water. Despite weighing 10 tons or more, LAVs float pretty well, allowing them to cross rivers, lakes, and ponds whenever called upon. This provides yet another way for convoys on the move to avoid obstacles and stay on mission. Water is not the only obstacle that can stop a moving army in its tracks. 
Ravines and crevices on land can easily prevent troops and vehicles from getting to where they need to go. For this reason, militaries began investing in AVLBs, or Armored Vehicle Launch Bridges. These are highly specialized military vehicles designed to rapidly deploy bridges or bridge sections, allowing the company to cross various obstacles. AVLBs typically consist of a vehicle chassis, usually based on an existing military tank or tracked vehicle. On the top, they will boast some sort of bridge module. In most cases, the vehicle can launch and retrieve the bridge module from either side. This allows the AVLB to cross its own deployed bridge and then pick it up on the other side. Some of the advantages for, these, for the Marines using this, uh, these bridging assets is to allow them to cross an obstacle. For this instance, it's a river uh, or a larger dry gap that wheeled and track wheels cannot get over. Uh, instead of bypassing and adding hours and potentially days into your movement or your convoy, these bridging assets give you the, the uh, opportunity to cut your timelines and down and crossing that obstacle where you want to cross. The United States has a particularly effective vehicle at its disposal in the form of the M1074 Joint Assault Bridge System. In this case, the vehicle chassis is a heavily modified Abrams tank. This gives it an extremely heavy mass, which offsets the weight of the bridge during deployment. It also allows for speeds of up to 45 miles per hour on paved roads and 30 miles per hour off-road. The bridge system boasts a hydraulic launching mechanism, which increases the speed and efficiency of deployment. With the ability to cross gaps as wide as 60 feet in just three minutes, the M1074 is vital for any land force, regardless of location. As effective as M1074 Joint Assault Bridge System, they are not the only engineering solution to this problem. The Puerto Rico Army National Guard has recently begun training on a new system known as a DSB, or Dry Support Bridge System. This modular bridging system is designed to provide a more permanent mobility solution than vehicle-based bridges. It consists of several prefabricated components and interchangeable sections which can be easily transported and assembled by a trained crew. The system comes with all the cranes and heavy lifting equipment needed to accomplish the mission and can take just a few hours to implement. Because of this heavy modular approach, bridges can be customized to the specific situation. In fact, a DSB can be up to 120 feet long if required. So far, DSL bridges have proven incredibly useful in conflicts like the Gulf War, the war in Afghanistan, and the Iraq War. However, the system also has immense humanitarian implications, as it can provide valuable aid to areas affected by earthquakes, floods, or other crises. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.